Hey guys, what's going on? This is Fred2266 here. And today, what I'm going to do here is since I got to go shopping uh, real soon, grocery shopping that is. I'm a male, I don't go for shopping for clothes and jewelry and perfume and uh, pop rocks and whatnot. So I'm going to just read chapter one of the story I'm reading today of part of the cream of the crop, best of the best, the cat that cut the carpet, whatever you want to call it series. This is Swayback Mountain by Butterscotch Sunday. Um, I've never read it. Ace Cow did a reading of it. I s haven't seen it, apparently, from what I remember. So, basically, it is, if you cannot tell, a, a uh, it's based off Swayback. Crossback, bro what am I doing? Brokeback Mountain. I was thinking of crossovers. Brokeback Mountain, which is a story of two gay men and their sexual lifestyle whatever <laughs> this is basically just a ship fic between Applejack and Rarity Rarity Jack or Apple D I prefer Rarity Jack but there's only three chapters and they're fairly short and this this story was done a little bit over two years ago so we're I'm reading it just about two years after it's done so cool Let's get started. Are you sure you need? Oh my God! Already off to a bad start. Are you sure you all really need all the stuff, Rarity? Applejack looked over the bulging saddlebags that the unicorn pony was carrying with difficulty up the sloping mountain path. We ain't going to one of your fashion shows, you know. Ah uh, ah! Uh, of course I know that, darling. Rarity was short of breath, and she kept shifting the saddlebags so they would sit more balanced on her back. But ah. Uh, when you said you were planning to go to the Swayback Mountains, oh, I just had to come with you. You see, frowned Applejack, I just don't get why you need to travel so far to collect berries. There's a whole forest of berries right next to Ponyville. But, huh, that's better. The saddlebags, which had been threatening to pull Rarity over, were finally sitting correctly. But darling, I already explained. I don't need just any old common berries. I need special berries that only grow in the Swayback Mountains. They're the only berries in all of Equestria whose juice is a perfect azure. And I just need that color dye for my latest range of accessories. Not that a pony has. She looked Applejack up and down critically. Close to the earth as you are, my dear. Would understand that. I understand plenty. Little Miss Everything has to be perfect. Applejack shook her head. I should have never told you that I was going to compete in the rodeo in Colt Springs. And that them Swayback Mountains was right on my way. I already sniffed. Well, seeing how we're already climbing these beastly mountains, I suggest we, that we make the best of a bad situation. She trotted into a... She broke into a trot and passed Applejack, who snorted in frustration. The Indigo... Oh, what? Those... That's, is that dialogue? I done that. Uh, I don't know. The indigo, the indigo main pony was as much trouble as a barrel, a barrel of Paris brats. Applejack was about to catch up when she heard a low rumble from behind them. She turned and saw a rank of black clouds being pushed into position by a squad of Pegasus ponies. She groaned and hit her head with her hoof. And how a tarnation I forget there was a thunderstorm planned for tonight. She broke into a trot, then a gallop as she sped past Rarity, who was already puffing from the thinner air of the mountains. She cried, You better put your running horseshoes on, little missy. There's a storm a brewing and it's coming right for us. Rarity looked back and cried out, Eep! She broke into a gallop as well and was soon next to Applejack. I just would have have to forgot my raincoat, she complained. And now with all this galloping, I'm getting absolutely coated in all the dust and perspiration. You sure are sweating like a prize pig, Applejack laughed. Rarity said nothing and merely turned her snout up in disgust at such a vulgar comparison. Mmm, yes. To the south, in the skies over Ponyville, Rainbow Dash groaned in frustration. The Pegasus ponies were all pushing the dark clouds in a completely wrong direction, and things were getting out of hand. Clouds crashed against clouds, lightning flashed, thunder roared, and rain started soaking in exactly the wrong parts of the countryside. That ditzy do, Dash muttered. This is the last time I let her organize a downpour. She jetted off through the area where Ditsy Doo and several of the less experienced Pegasus ponies were mashing together the smaller storm clouds, piling up them into a gigantic thunderhead, but Dash was too late to prevent disaster. It flashed like a sudden, eye-shattering streak of errant lightning, and the thunder that followed rolled over the landscape. 
like a shockwave. The rain started to fall, softly at first, in brief squalls that passed swiftly as they came. The thunderstorm was still far off, but Applejack knew that it was going to be a huge one. Just what do these Pegasus ponies think they're doing? Applejack thought to herself, shaking her head in disbelief. They're just big old show-offs. And speaking of show-offs, she turned back to where Rarity was struggling to keep up with her. Unicorn pony saddlebags were slowing her down, and her mane was wet with sweat as well as rain. Come on, princess, said Applejack. At this rate, we ain't going to reach the river before nightfall. And I sure as apples don't want to camp when there's liable to be a landslide. Just, just, Rarity panted, redoubling her efforts. Let me catch my breath a moment. Applejack groaned, but she stopped to let Rarity catch up. As soon as we're over the rise, it'll all be downhill. Rarity nodded, throwing a foreleg over Applejack's shoulders and leaning against the earth pony as she gasped for air. It may be that I did pack a few too many items. Applejack looked at the bulging saddlebags. Just what did you pack? We're only going to be away for three days tops. Well, said Rarity, her face no longer flush as before. There's three days worth of outfits, of course, and each outfit naturally needs a small selection of accessories to go with it, so that I'm ready for any kind of situation. And then there's my makeup box, and then since I have no idea what kind of lightning to expect, lighting to expect in Cold Springs, I simply had to bring all of my foundation so as to not be caught out. You see, Applejack, Rarity raised her nose in the air, and her face grew haughty. Not every pony can be as reckless and fly by the seat of your saddle as you are, my dear. I must be ready for every eventuality, or else I shall look ridiculous in front of every pony. And fashion death is quite simply the most dire of fates. She tossed her mane in emphasis. Applejack rolled her eyes in irritation. I can think of a dozen worse things than looking the foal in front of others. Being struck by a lion or swept away by a raging torrent being foremost in my mind at the moment. She gestured towards the approaching black thunderhead and the blue haze of torrential rain beneath it that was sleeping across the landscape towards them. Now let's get going! Not long after they reached the ridge top, but the path down the mountainside was almost invisible now. The sky was covered in cloud and twilight spread over them. Oh, <laughs> twilight, you get out of the clouds. <clears throat> that was lame. Applejack led the way, gingerly testing every now ledge of the rock to make sure it was safe. And Rarity stuck close behind her. Don't fall quite so close, warned Applejack. Or else we'll both end up at the bottom of this mountain a mite faster than we expect. Rarity stopped abruptly. Some scree, loosened under her hooves, fell away from the mountainside, and she jumped back with a yelp. The rocks fell for several heartbeats. They then clattered uh, ominously somewhere far below. What did I tell you? Rarity moaned. I don't think I can go on, she sobbed. I can't see a thing. Applejack flashed in anger. You gotta go on, missy. Else the rain will catch up with us and then these rocks will be slippery as well. Rarity closed her eyes and swallowed. She nodded. Very well. Let's go on then. Progress was slow, with Applejack, but with Applejack sharp codgling and the threatening peals of t thunder that soon came much sooner after the flashes of lightning that gave birth to them, Rarity found the courage to go on. They were almost at the bottom of the mountain. Beneath them, the river that flowed down the mountains and across the plains as cold springs became visible, appearing as a sinuous cobalt gray path with every flash of lightning. Just a small ways now left, left now, Rarity, said Applejack. Then a quick gallop across the bridge and we'll be on the other side, and we can kin make cap camp under one of those rocky outcrops. Oh, thanks, Celestia, cried Rarity. I simply can't wait to be out of these wet and sticky saddlebags. Let's hurry up and... But in their haste to move on, the unicorn pony's, pony's hoof came too hard down on a rock hid in front of her by the wet mud. She slipped backwards, landed on her side, and started sliding precipitously down the path. Rocks and mud came away with her, and Applejack had no time to react as the muddy unicorn pony and part of the mountainside struck her and knocked her off her feet. Together, sparred, spattered in mud and screaming, they careened down the path, dislodging more stones and mud as they went. Three heartbeats later, they reached the bottom. But, it didn't th but, it, but they didn't stop. Close to the river, the mud was even deeper, and although they were both able to right themselves, they kept sliding, their hoofs skating across the bank, and then with a colossal splash, they were in the bitterly cold water of the river. Applejack surfaced first, coughing and sputtering. Rarity! Rarity! She cried out, but her friend was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Rarity surfaced nearer. She was coughing as well, dazed but, un dazed but uninjured. Come on, little missy, said Applejack, taking hold of one of Rarity's saddlebags in her mouth and pulling her towards the opposite bank. Swim harder! I can't swim, Rarity cried. I can only pony paddle! 
that was funny for some reason. Then pony pal as hard as you can. Several desperate minutes later, they were on the other side of the stream. It wasn't so muddy here. Applejack pulled Rarity from the water into the wet sand. The unicorn pony coughed up some more water, but she managed to raise her head and smile at Applejack. Rarity's eyes were moist from tears, river water and rain. Oh my darling Applejack! She breathed, getting her to her feet with difficulty and pony hugging her Applejack by putting her neck around her, over her friends and nuzzling her cheek. You saved my life! Applejack's eyes flashed with anger. Then a flush of overwhelming relief washed over her and, and she softened. They were safe. She pulled out the hug and smiled at the grateful unicorn pony. Shucks, Rarity, she replied. Twart none at all. She lowered her eyes in modesty, but then opened them when she heard Rarity shriek. Applejack, Rarity cried. Your hat, it's gone. My hat? Applejack lifted a hoof, hoof and felt her head all over. Rarity was right. It was gone. My hat? Applejack burst into tears and Rarity looked at her in shock. She'd never seen the air pony so upset. My hat, it's gone. I've gone and lost it. Oh, my dear, Rarity said. It just says Rarity, but I'm assuming she meant said. I'll make you a new one as soon as we get back to Ponyville. Don't you worry about it. You don't understand, cried Applejack. That was my pappy's hat, she sobbed. The last time I saw him alive, he took it off his head and gave it to me. And he said, this is yours now, my little apple bucker. Keep this here hat safe. And don't forget that your pappy loved you more than anything else in the world. Rarity's eyes welled up, but then they grew steely. She shook the tears from her eyes and jerked her head out of the wet saddlebags. I'll find your hat, darling, she said, galloping away at full sp speed downstream along the beach. Wait, Rarity, I would just shout out to her, but the unicorn pony didn't stop. That silly filly is going to do something crazy. I just know it. By the time she caught up, Rarity had spotted Applejack's hat floating in the river. It was almost invisible, but it was her hat all right. Rarity stopped and stabbed her horn into the air. Purple azure energy sparkled along it and the river of the hat was surrounded in the same light, but it quickly flickered and faded. It's too far away, said Rarity in frustration. Rarity, don't do nothing silly. But the unicorn pony had already left into the river and was paddling towards the hat. Oh, pony fetters, why don't you ever listen to me? Applejack galloped up the beach, keeping alongside her. Rarity is right, right behind the hat now, and the purple magic once again sprang the life along her horn. This time the glow remained strong, and with difficulty she, lift, she lifted the hat out of the water and floated across to Applejack on the shore. Once the glow flickered, and Rarity almost dropped it, but she bit her lip, squeezed her eyes shut, and with a final burst of magic the hat had made, at last made it to the river bank. Applejack grabbed it in her mouth and flung it far from the water, for she could see that Rarity was exhausted and barely able to keep her head above water. Then the unicorn suddenly stopped swimming and slipped under the surface. Applejack leapt into the river and in moments was next to where she had last seen her friend. She took a deep breath and dived down, searching for her with her mouth and forehooves for Rarity in the black, swirling water. An age later, her lungs burned and she was forced to surface again, but with a desperate sucking uh, in the air. She straightaway dived down again, and this time she found her. With no saddlebags to grab this time, Applejack had Rarity's curly tail in her mouth, and painfully she dragged her sopping an unconscious friend from the water. Oh, Rarity, Applejack muttered, wiping, wiping the water from the unicorn pony's face. What have you gotten done to yourself, you crazy little filly? She put her cheek to her friend's mouth. Rarity wasn't breathing. Applejack didn't hesitate, but at once took a deep breath, put her lips against Rarity's pale blue ones, and breathed out. Breathe, darn you, breathe! Don't give up on me, Rarity, breathe! Applejack stepped back and looked at her friend. She lay there, unmoving, in the dark, the rain falling about her. New tears burst out in Applejack's eyes. No. Oh, Celestia, please no, she whispered. So that was chapter one. There's two more chapters, and I'm going to read them when I get back today. And I will probably read a new... Well, I will read a new story, then I'll read maybe another one. That's another very popular story. We'll see. Anyway, thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you later.